Hey guys, the mailman was really good to me today. I've been waiting on these for a while. There are a couple of vintage books and they are going to be the subject of my next video. Uh, why am I dressed like this? Yeah, I'm one of those suit and tie types. I'll bet you never guess that. There's no fat possum t-shirt or no uh, um, popcorn sun bibs today. You caught me. This is what I look like when I come home from work. I'm really excited about these books. They are... Uh, the uh, basis for uh, probably the weirdest and most interesting episode I've ever made. You know that I like to uh, tell stories in my videos and, and uh, put some interest behind building these cigar box guitars. And so I've had some pretty good ones that had stories behind them, but this one is going to take the cake. I've got uh, some parts laid out here. I got everything I need to build my next guitar. It's it's uh, a red and black Camacho box um, I got my matchbooks and believe it or not the theme of this guitar is Electric chair. That's right electric chair So going along the theme of electric chair, which involves believe it or not electricity all these matchbooks have lightning bolts and this book right here and this book right here tell the story and if you can see enough of it you can probably figure out what it is plus there's a hint somewhere in this mass here that kind of tells you where this is going and what's going to happen but as i build this guitar i am going to tell the story and it's a very strange story it involves somebody being accused of murder almost being a sentence to the electric chair it involves Jesus it involves I mean this is by far the best story yet um, anyway let's get to work and I'll tell you the story as we're going all right there we go we've got the box marked off the top of it we know where the thickness of the box is on the edges so we don't uh, get hung up there when we close the box We've marked the center and we found where our sound holes are going to go. They drop in just like that. Now, when I lay the graphic out for this guitar, the box top is going to be the graphic from a book. So I'm going to kind of look at the picture and I kind of want to size the picture in a way where the general features of it uh, don't get too covered up uh, the best we can. And we can still see what that is. And, and the same with the bridge and the pickup. So anyway, about March 15th, 1895 is where our story starts with the birth of a young man on the Kansas-Missouri border. And in fact, uh, he says in this book right here, Up From the Depths, that uh, it was so close that no one ever really knew uh, whether he was born in Kansas or, or Missouri. Anyway... This book describes a, an early life of the father and mother being around. Uh, and then the 1900 census of the United States, you find this, this boy living with the mother and father. But then shortly thereafter, something goes wrong. The father leaves. The boy is left with the mother uh, uh, who is fending for herself and trying to support the young boy. There we go. That's better. A little bit more to cut out on this side and sand down there. Anyway... The young man, about the time the young man is, say, seven or eight years old, the father leaves for some reason. We're just going to take this file and do this. And you know if you can hear me. Oh, wait a minute. I can't hear you. Anyway, the father up and leaves and leaves the boy with the mother. And so the mother takes up ironing and cleaning and that kind of thing to... To provide for herself and the boy. Anyway, back to this book. This book describes the kid starts uh, dancing and entertaining. So uh, they're in a mining town and people would get their paycheck and uh, go to the beer joint, come out drunk. The kid learned how to dance. I, d I don't know what kind of dance it was. I, I envisioned some D. Ray White or Jessica White type clog dancing or something on a board that's amusing he also learned how to sing play a little guitar so he was kind of like a, 
for lack of a better comparison, he was kind of like a young carny, you know, doing whatever he could to uh, supplement his mother's income. So then uh, the book talks about by the time he's 14, he is describes himself a, as a good gambler to the point where he can do card tricks and he can take uh, kind of advantage of these drunks that are coming in. So he's pretty much a street hustler, uh, carny type by the time he's 14 years old. There's a lot of parallels here because the first job I had after my paper route <laughs> When I was a kid was the carnivals would come to town. I'd help set up the rides for uh, about 10 bucks a day. And I thought it was great. So, yeah, I've been a carny too, amongst all the other things. Okay, so we've worked that down with a file. This humbucker will fit right in there and we can glue it in. And I've covered it up. It's chrome, so I didn't want to mar it up. Anyway, back to the story. In the spring of 1919, this young man is basically describing himself as in hopeless despair, wondering how he's going to escape from this. And he credits God with um, giving him a woman. In fact, the woman God made for me. So uh, he runs across this Mabel Scott uh, in the spring of 1919 during uh, near Augusta, Kansas. Anyway, that's what she looks like. That's pretty striking. Uh, I can see where you think God made this woman for him. Anyway, the minute he was with her, his life uh, turned around. So this book is pretty rare. If you can run across it, it's called Up From The Depths. So back to this for a second. I've marked off the center line up on the neck, the box, and, and the tail piece. And I've marked uh, lines where I can drill uh, pilot holes where the neck is going to uh, bolt uh, uh, to the top of the box and so I've, I've drawn those lines here and I'm going to make sure that I'm squared up and I'm going to put uh, bolts there and down in here so anyway we're now into this book uh, it's up from the depths and, and now we've added on the miracle that saved me from the electric chair so fast forward uh, uh, Jay Warren Lowman and uh, Mabel Scott who is now Mrs. Lowman they decide that they're going to um, become religious people. And in fact, they are going to uh, go to a theology school and both of them become ministers. So while the process of that is going on, somehow some gentleman owes uh, uh, Mr. Lowman some money. The person that owes Mr. Lowman the money says... Uh, you know what, I can't pay you, but I've got this car. So I'll tell you what, I'll give you this car, which is worth a little bit more than what I owe you. And you just give me the difference and then we'll be settled up. But if you don't take the car, which Mr. Lowman had no use for really at the time, uh, I can't pay you at all. So it was kind of one of them deals, take the car or lose all your money. So he tried to sell the car locally once he had it. He wrote a cashier's check out for the balance or something and documented that, that he owned the car and got a bill of sale. Anyway, uh, they were traveling around in their preaching endeavors. He ended up selling the car somewhere else. So fast forward a bit. Car's gone. Life carries on. Uh, sometime later, Mr. Lowman and Mrs. Lowman get on a train uh, she's going to go see her family while he hunts down his father. And um, uh, at a train station somewhere, he describes in the book that uh, he was approached and arrested for murder. It turns out that someone had uh, got a hold of this car, uh, took somebody, murdered them in it, burned them in it, and abandoned it, and the paper trail pointed back to him. So he was basically set up uh, for murdering this person in Texas. So for the better part of the next few months, about four months, he is imprisoned um, and he is set up uh, through what looks to be a, a prosecutor that wasn't really worried about evidence much. Um, he would be cleared and then they would bring somebody in from Texas to refile the charges. And it looked like he was uh, going down for something he didn't commit. So 
So he would be in one court and he would be uh, released there and then as soon as he'd get out there'd be somebody waiting for him outside. So again we had a prosecutor that was just concerned with making sure that somebody uh, was prosecuted for the crime whether they committed it or not. So as time passes he has some very rough times in jail. He describes uh, mobs that would come in, local mobs that didn't want to wait for somebody to be on trial. They would just come in, grab the person, beat him to death, try and hang him, all that kind of thing. So he went through a lot in, in the jail. So I, I'm lining up the rest of these bolts for the neck down drilling pilot holes. Here's what I'm doing. So, yeah, I'm getting to talking so much. I got to make sure that this is all lined up correctly there because I need to drill these other four pilot holes. Anyway, Things are rough for him in, in jail. It's either somebody trying to kill somebody or mobs coming in for vigilante justice or whatever. But finally, the day comes where he's going to court and he is up for capital murder, which is punishable by death in the electric chair. And he's already been through a couple of proceedings. And things weren't looking good for him, so he thought, you know what, I'm going to end up being electrocuted. So, it turns out that he had a pretty good attorney because the attorney kind of took it personal that this prosecutor was running him through all these bogus procedures and, and then trying to find another angle to put him uh, away from the murder he didn't commit and so what the attorney did was he went back to the theology college that uh, J. Warren Lowman and his new wife had gone to in Bethany, Oklahoma which is kind of funny I used to move drilling rigs out of, of Bethany, Oklahoma and El Reno and Yukon right around there when I was back in the old days when I was working the oil fields and Anadarko gas fields out there anyway Turns out there was a bunch of people that were coming in and able to testify that he had actually been in college uh, and taken classes there and had probably 15 witnesses. And his lawyer said that, well, there's probably, you know, tons more that I could produce uh, if necessary. But it, it redeemed him and for the rest of his life. He credited this experience as to building the faith of his wife and himself. Thank you, Tammy. All this imprisonment uh, stuff happened uh, at the end of 1920. Uh, that's when Mr. Lowman was arrested and uh, held in jail for the latter part of that year. So I've got a 1920 Buffalo Head Nickel that we're going to epoxy into the neck right there at the 12th fret. All right, so I've got the uh, neck bolts run through. I got a lot to do, lot to do yet. I've got to set up the bridge and all that kind of thing. So, um, but I'm going to kind of show you here uh, from the story. We've got. Mabel, they spent their whole life together. There was something in the newspapers. I've kind of followed this down. They lived to a ripe old age. They were ministers. Um, they traveled all over the United States. You find them all over the newspapers in the 19, late 1920s and 1930s. Um, they ended up settling in the Los Angeles area. Um, they were together their whole life. He, he thought this woman was amazing. So uh, what I've done here is the artist that this guitar is going to. I took a graphic. Uh, off of uh, their latest album and then we're gonna on the back of the guitar we're gonna overlay this on there and then um, the same thing on the front I took uh, this graphic as a background and then we took this book and digitized it so we ended up with uh, this is what the front of the guitar is gonna look like uh, we made it black and white it's gonna have chrome trim uh, we're going to put the uh, graphic of this up on the headstock. 
and we're going to size uh, this graphic so it'll fit up there and uh, it'll be a test only to uh, 100 years of family history. So I will show you what it looks like when it's all done. All right, everybody, the electric chair guitar is done. We're going to have a close look at it in a minute here and uh, have a listen to it as well. But it's about time I leveled with you about why I did this episode. Now, you know, I'm always on the lookout for trashy slide guitar, blues music, especially stuff played on junk guitars or cigar box guitars, uh, especially one man band stuff. So I ran across uh, this music. I don't know whether it was on a suggested video or something, but as soon as I heard it, I'm, I'm like, what's up with this? It's called Granny's Gold Teeth. Yeah, it's got to be loud. So anyway, I like the music. It was an immediate hit with Tammy. She started bopping around when she heard it. But the words are kind of funny. Uh, Granny's gold teeth and Granny's old mouth. Gonna put them on a necklace. Gonna put them in a pouch. Whoa, dude. So anyway, this song is the artist is named Tim Lohman. His band, which is just him on everything, is called Low Volts. Uh, but this song piqued my interest. And it's not like uh, my family doesn't have its share of issues. I mean, my grandpa had a beer joint with a two-story outhouse. So, yeah, I'm not like a sensitive person or anything. So, anyway, I started looking into this Tim Lohman. I looked at his site, the Low Volt site. I'll give you a link to that down below. Uh, and the story gets got even weirder it's like his great-grandfather was a minister yeah y'all repent um, wouldn't that make a great guitar anyway his great-grandfather was a minister and he starts on his page describing a story where his great-grandfather was almost electrocuted for a murder he did not commit and that's the story you heard in the build of this guitar so let's take a look at it now and have a listen a quick bit about the mechanics of this thing uh, it's a four string I did an episode on strings and tunings catch that one I'm putting a link uh, right up in the upper right hand corner right about now really like these vintage looking tuners um, it's fretted it's 25 and a half inch scale it's got the typical sound holes I put on it's got a flat chrome humbucker it has uh, a piezo under the bridge right under here um, the piezo jack is here the jack for the coil is right here and they're separate volume controls on my guitars I usually put the brightest colored one or the red one for the hot meaning the coil and the duller colored for the piezo jack it has an adjustable uh, bridge typical to my guitars and we've got a low volt song in the background called History Told Me, uh, quite apropos to this guitar. I uh, want to remember we started off with a couple of books written by Reverend Lohman, uh, Up From the Depths, which covers his uh, repentance from his sinful youth, uh, and uh, the book he wrote later, Up From the Depths, which is uh, this book as well as the miracle that saved me from the electric chair that tells the story so uh, we took uh, this uh, graphic and digitized it and this low volts logo uh, to make uh, the headstock graphic these matchbooks here were digitized and put on the neck they're about switches electrical switches uh, lightning bolts uh, electrical stuff that's bad for your health kind of like an electric chair we put um, the book here digitized it turned it black and white use the background from the low volts album that's just released now you should get that I'll give you a link below and uh, put this cover over that and that's what makes the front of the guitar On the back, as always, Tammy's signature, 
I love those tuners and we have a nice little piece of sash cord here's guitar strap isn't that pretty We've got a 1920 Buffalo head nickel that's the year all this bad stuff happened uh, the imprisonment, the false charges, and on the back we've got the love of Reverend Loman's life, Mabel Scott laid over the album cover, and there's Mabel. So that's it. Um, let's have a listen to it real quick with the best I can do. Okay, I've got this hooked up to two practice amps. One for the piezo, one for the coil. Uh, it makes a little bit of noise on its own with uh, just acoustically. Now if we kick up the piezo, it's got that thump on the box sound. Let's kick up the coil. Now the cool part about this is you can turn both of them and get the best of both worlds. So as always, housekeeping, that little round circle down below at the end of the video, subscribe, you'll get uh, noticed every time one of my videos comes out, my playlist and a suggested video is there, as well as an email address for me if you have any questions or want to know where I got something or have a comment for me. So let's close this out as I'm about ready to walk out the door to go give this guitar, guitar to Tim Lohman tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll get some footage of that for an upcoming episode, but let's close out with some live footage of Granny's Gold Teeth that I filmed in Los Angeles a few weeks ago.